In this video we're going to look at how to republish HTML data over MQTT and we're going to be using Python to do that and we're going to be using uh, a flight arrival as the, as the example. A bit of background here, um, the web or websites is a main technology or main mechanism organizations have of making information available and the web is powered by the HTTP protocol. Now this protocol is a request response protocol and it's not designed to push information to a user and there's applications and uh, like the one we're going to look at flight arrivals, uh, bus arrivals, train arrivals that kind of information is more suitable to a published subscribe model like MQTT. Now the aim of this uh, little project, this little demo is to create a very simple republish script uh, it reads a web page using HTTP as, as normal and then it republishes that, that data over MQTT. So this is a, a flight arrivals website or website publishing that type of information and we connect to that website using HTTP and we get the information back using HTTP. Now if the data changes on that website then the client needs to make a request to see the change data. Now what normally happens in these circumstances is the the page refresh is hand handled automatically by a bit of JavaScript code in the actual web page itself so it's automatic the user doesn't have to click the refresh button it happens automatically and usually that happens uh, once a minute but the important thing to note is every time it does a refresh then it sends the entire web page normally back to the client. Now this isn't really a problem if you've only got one client but if you've got hundreds and thousands of clients then you're going to send, be sending lots of data between the web server and the client and most of that data will be the same so there won't be much change. Now what we're going to look at is actually taking that data from the web server so we're going to read a web page from the web server using a Python script here and then we're going to process that page and then we're going to publish the changes onto an MQTT broker and clients can actually receive the data from that MQTT broker and what we're going to do is we're going to reformat the data and we're going to actually publish the data on the flight numbers so this is going to, the topics we're going to use is the flight numbers of the actual airlines themselves now this type of uh, scenario you can implement without actually making any changes whatsoever to the web server and the web page that's serving up the uh, flight information or whatever information you're serving up uh, because it's all done on the republished client. Now ultimately you'd move to a, a situation like this and in this situation here you'll connect to the web server using HTTP and you'll change the web page so that it actually uh, uses MQTT over web sockets and the uh, flight information will be provided from the MQTT broker uh, here. Now you'd still probably have to have a, a republished script in the background that actually took the data from the web server and, and put it into the MQTT broker or you'd have to feed it in directly. So this scenario we're going to look at in, in another video and I still have to write the the web page to do this and when I've done that I'll publish another video on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this scenario here uh, in this video. We're going to look at the republish script and we're going to look at uh, the data sent to the MQTT broker here. Now a republish script, a demo script, it's written in Python. It reads the data from the web page and it processes that data and it republishes the data over MQTT. It filters the data by fl flight number. It only publishes the changes. So if the data hasn't changed, it won't publish it uh, to the MQTT broker. And it can read the data from disk. And that means you don't have to uh, bother the airline server. And what I've done uh, is I've actually recorded an hour's worth of data. And I'll make that data available to you. And it's, it basically reads the data from the um, airline server every minute and it copies that web page to disk and, and then all the script does after that instead of going to the web server it reads the web pages from the disk and it processes the web pages from the disk so you can actually run it as many times as you want and, and not bother the airline server and the script has got the copy option in there if you want to do it yourself then you can set it so the, the script will copy the data onto your local drive so you can 
uh, have your own test data. These are the important script settings. Uh, the first one is the site. This is where you're going to get the arrivals and departure information from. And the base topic, this is the base topic you're publishing out onto MQTT, and I'll show you that when we publish it. it the record flag, I shouldn't say on record flag, that's that line there. It's just a record flag, and that's, that's false. And if you set it to true, then all the script will do is will go to the airline server, read the data, copy it to disk, and it will do that every minute. And after 60 minutes, it will quit. Get data from disk is true. This is what you'd normally have it set to. So you'd have that normally set to false, and you'd have that set to true, and it would read the data on disk. So it'd read the web pages from there. Now, the scan interval, I'm setting it I just set to 10 there, but I think I'm using 15 now. If you're reading the data from disk, this should be, sorry, if you're reading the data from the website, this is normally set to 60 seconds. But it not only is the scan interval for the data reading from the website, it's also the scan interval for the publishing to the MQTT broker. So for the demo, and you probably when you're testing it, you set it to a, a lower interval because we're not reading from the website, we're reading from the disk, so it makes no difference. And we set it to a lower interval so we can see things happening much quicker. So I've set it to, I think, 15 in the script that I'll be running in a second. Before we move on, though, this is the actual airline site. Um, so this is where the raw data is coming from. And I said that I'm not actually reading it from the site. I'm reading the recorded data that I've got. And this is the script here. It's called Flights. And I've also got a script called Simple Subscribe. And that is... You could use the Mosquito sub-tool for this, but I've created this one because it makes it easier to see the data, and you'll see that in a second when I run the, the script. And when I run it in record, the script in record mode, it puts the data into here, into a directory called Pages, and you can see these are all the web pages uh, scanned every 60 seconds and just just save to disk there. So when I'm running this uh, reading from disk, I just read 1.html, then 60 seconds later, or whatever the scan interval is, I read 2, 3, etc. Okay, so let's look quickly at the script. There's the flight script. Now, I'm only going to publish 6. Now, normally this would be 60, because we've recorded 60 minutes worth of, of data but I'm only going to run six and you can see here the actual data I'm extracting is actually organized very nicely and I'm just extracting the flight numbers and the airlines etc from the from the actual cells and and then we make a decision down here if the data is the same then we don't publish it but if the data has changed then we we publish it and we publish a count, a total bytes, and the number of messages processed. Just go up a bit, you see here, if the record flag is set, then we just go and get the pages and wait 60 seconds and go and get the next page and store it onto disk. And then when we finish, we exit it. And you can see just up here, uh, this function get web page, it makes the decision. If the get from disk flag is set, then we Oh, sorry isn't set then we get the page this will get the page from the website itself if it is set then we get the page from the file and this is the option I'll be using okay there's nothing else I, I don't think that you need to be aware of to run the script so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna start the subscribe script and I'm gonna start the flight script and then we're gonna see what it looks like right this is the subscribe script and to make it easy to demo, I'm actually focusing on the flights from Air France. You can see it here. So let's run this script and let it connect. Drag it over to the side so it's running. And then let's start the flight script. So it reads the data passes the page and then it publishes the data and you should see the data being published over here there is data there as it read read the data again and this time the first time it published 287 this time it's published in 266 this is the total bytes 
and notice the difference between the bytes it's publishing and the bytes it read and you can see the thing over here a third time of doing it and notice over here on the third time we're not publishing that much information because we're only publishing changes and uh, we've done read again and here we've only published again too and there we read it again okay now I'm going to stop that script there and this one should stop as well in a minute okay you can see quite clearly here though that that's the size of the data we're reading in this is the size of the web page we're reading and we're only publishing three messages at this time and the total bytes we're standing is 153 because there's only been three changes but we processed 375 flights so and only three were, were changed so it's quite a massive saving in in uh, network bandwidth if you using MQTT and you're only publishing changes as opposed to publishing everything okay um, that brings us to the end of the video another best way to actually see this in action again is to download the script and the data from the site and I'll make that available in a download link and try it out yourself now if you've got any comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then uh, click on the like button below if you want to be notified of new videos on the channel then you can always subscribe and if you uh, you, if you're using social media and uh, you'd like to share it on social media then feel free until next time goodbye